Welcome back, everyone. We're here with our last Cabral concept of the weekend, or I should say of the week. This is our Cabral house calls, uh, the second of the weekend answering our community's questions. Hopefully, you tuned in yesterday. We got some really great ones. So I'm going to do a quick recap of that. If you weren't able to tune in, you can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2024 for all those questions and answers. Uh, the first one was on the best forms of zinc. You'll definitely want to check that out. I should say the best forms of chromium for blood sugar, uh, but zinc could be one of those factors as well. We talked about PCOS. We can check that out uh, on yesterday's show as well. Talked about what to do if you have a family member that's smoking and they refuse to quit. How do you balance all the uh, oxidative damage caused from smoking? So we chatted about that. Uh, Cynthia had a question yesterday about uh, dysbiosis, basically gas and bloating. Um, So we talked about that. We talked about diastasis recti. So some women get this uh, after pregnancy. It happens with pregnancy, but it may not go back. What to do if it doesn't go back for your abdomen? And the last one we talked about is what to do if you ever have to take antibiotics. So check that out. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash 2024. Now, today's episode, you can follow along, read along with the questions if you'd like at stephencabral.com forward slash 2025. The first question today is coming in from Kenneth. And Kenneth says, really enjoyed your podcast with Mind Pump. I've had some really bad stomach issues that have lessened since going to a more high-fat diet, high-protein diet, and smaller but more meals. I've had more success lately, but your approach has struck a chord with me. My question is in regards to the biofilm that comes out with bowel movements as a gel-like substance. Do I need to get rid of it? Is it a bad thing? Thanks. All right, Kenneth, happy to help. Um, So the thing is, when people go on a high-fat, high-protein diet because they can't handle eating carbohydrates, it's akin to um, going on a a medication, right? You're masking symptoms. That's what you're doing. Again, you didn't do anything wrong, Kenneth, but that's the the common vernacular if you don't peel back the onion to its very core, right? To to figuring out what's really going on. That's the analogy. So uh, you should be able to eat carbohydrates. That's the bottom line. If you eat carbohydrates and you get bloated, it means that you most likely have H. pylori, candida, or SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's really easy to figure this out. You can run a bacteria and parasite um, at home test and the candida and metabolic vitamins test. That's it. If you want, run the food sensitivity test as well. Okay? Easy, simple, you will know. And then you'll know and you'll get a plan based what to do to fix your body. You can find all of that over at equi.life. Best investment you'll make. I mean, literally, I didn't get well until I started running functional medicine lab tests. You don't have to do it with Equalife, right? I make it easy for people. I open source all of these labs that you typically have to have your doctor sign off on. Uh, But you can also contact any of the 4,000 plus integrative health practitioners out there. Uh, Probably about a third of them are level two. So you want a level two if you want to run labs. That's uh, over at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. So feel free to work with us over at equi.life or you can just go to integrativehealthpractitioner.org. Click on the practitioners and you'll find all of our integrative health practitioners that are skilled in helping you. All right. And then in terms of the biofilm, well, you don't want all this biofilm coming out. So I don't know that it is though, because people on a very high fat diet sometimes have a looser looking stool and that is a poor fat absorption. And that is not necessarily biofilm. Now, if it's definitely biofilm, it is that gel like substance. Well, this is one of the things that you need to work on. Right. And so, um, well, it, let's just say you didn't ever want a lab test. Uh, maybe it was out of your price range. I understand. I would begin right in then with the CBO protocol and the citricidal drops. And if you need more information on that, just write in at cabralsupportgroup.com. That's our free Facebook group, and you can feel free to write in. All right, Haley's up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. I wake up almost every morning with a sinus headache. I've had difficulty breathing through my nose for years. I purchased a high-quality ear filter, the one you recommend, and no longer let our dogs sleep in the bedroom with us. I take an allergy pill every day, but I don't feel like they have that much effect on me anymore, and I do saline rinse uh, nearly every morning and night to help clear some congestion, but it only works temporarily. Any suggestions? Thanks. Okay. So you've done a lot of great things because that's a lot of what I would tell you to do, right? Uh, I would tell you to get the dog or pets out of the bedroom. I would tell you to have as few books and dusty things that you can keep in your bedroom. Your bedroom should be like modern looking. It should be very clean, very little in there. Um, But I have some more suggestions. So put a dust mite allergy, 
zip thing. What do you call them? Well, you basically zip it around your mattress and you zip it around your pillows because the pillows and the mattress might have a lot of dust mites, okay? And you might be very sensitive to dust. So do that, then you put your nice bamboo pillowcase over that, okay? Um, wash your sheets at least once a week. I know it's hard to do it more than once a week. So once a week in hot water. Get rid of all the dust. Remember, the dust comes a lot of it from your skin slothing off, okay? So really important. Do that step. That may help. Now, the next thing is, and this isn't for everyone, but you want your head, if you're someone that has difficulty breathing through the nose, let your head be slightly above the heart, right? You want to basically parallel when you sleep so your head's straight. Give yourself, just prop yourself up just a little bit. Now, if it doesn't help, then don't do that anymore. But you want to prop yourself up maybe just a little bit. Make sure there's no neck tightness that comes along with it so that it's easier for you to breathe, okay? Some people actually have a mattress that's slightly slant a little bit. I want to be, I tell people to be careful with that. I don't like you to slant your mattress uh, because then all the blood and the flow goes towards the legs and it pulls the legs. So we don't want that. We want a nice back and forth flow. All right. The other thing that I want you to do is you might have small septums, right? The small air passages in your nose like I do, right? So what can you do? Um, I don't do this anymore, but before, when I was retraining my nasal passages to be able to breathe better, I used a nasal strip that went uh, a nasal yeah nasal strip that went over the outside of the nose. Uh, they're very common, of course, and you can get one that just helps open up those nasal passages. You can eventually look at mult taping. I've done multiple podcasts on mult taping, one of them with Patrick McKeon, and uh, I also did a Friday review on mult tape as well. So let's start there. Let me know how that works. Keep doing the things you're doing. Um, try a product called Hist Pro. Uh, I, again, I can't give you medical advice. I can't give you specific protocols. But what I would do is try three of those, then try six of those a day, right? Three in the morning, three at night. Really great for um, histamine issues. And so that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot to do. But try them all and uh, let us know how they went. Paul is up. Hi, Doc. Have you heard of Lumen? Not sure if it's marketing or if it's actually worth it. It measures your metabolism by measuring the CO2 concentration using a breath maneuver, which is performed by inhaling a fixed volume of air through the Lumen device, dynamic to each individual, holding it for 10 seconds and exhaling fully. So they basically recommend exhaling every morning, which helps you identify things like what works best for the workout that day, how many carbs to eat to avoid fire at storage, etc. All right. So I've heard of this device. I have one. I've not used it yet. There's uh, so here's the thing. I used to use these way back in the day with a um, dietitian that I partnered with when I was like 23 years old at this very high end gym that I was working at, and it was just like the original devices uh, like 20 years ago, and they were great. And they do work for basically basal metabolic rate, but in terms of like how many carbs to eat or not carbs to eat. No, I can't get there. I can't get there. I can get there for the most part on basically overall, like within a certain number metabolism, uh, but not overall in terms of like, these are the carbs eat. These are not because you could have gut dysbiosis, right? And unless it's like telling you you've gut dysbiosis, it's it's difficult to do. You know, it'd have to be a breath test actually looking for methane gas uh, and other types of fermentables. So I'm not against it. I still have to use it myself. I'm not saying it's a bad device at all. Um, could be absolutely fantastic. So I have to give it a full look through. Um, so that's that. Again, like I don't. I'm not. I have an Oura ring. I've got an Apple Watch. I've got a Leap device. I've got. Um, you know, all sorts of devices. And I do love them all. There's kind of a time and place, but I don't use any one as like, you know, the Bible. That's it. All right. Hopefully that helps, Paula. Uh, Jennifer's up next. Hi, thank you so much for showing up every weekend to share your incredible knowledge with us. I'm a 23-year-old woman. I've done several of your protocols and just maintain it now with the daily nutritional support, omega-3, probiotic, vitamin D, C, digestive enzymes, and magnesium every day. I eat a predominantly paleo plant-based diet with occasional fish here and there. I do 45-minute sessions of lower body strength training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesdays is upper body TRX with some body weight circuits like high knees, skipping, etc. Saturday is upper body strength training with sprints. Therefore, I feel like I'm always performing anaerobic exercises. I'm not sure I should implement some aerobic exercise. I'm super fit and do more than 10,000 steps every day, and I feel great, but not sure if I should do aerobic for health-based reasons. I just don't really have the time to add another workout a day and also enjoy the two days of rest per week. All right, it's a great question, really fair question, and I get it. Uh, you're, you know, you're crushing it, right? You're crushing it. You're doing phenomenal you're in shape, you're using your supplements, you've done your protocols, you don't mess with success, right? You can always change little variables, 
work in your sleep, tweak things a bit, you're doing great. If you weren't getting your 10,000 steps per day, then I would say we need to add aerobic exercise. But you're doing circuits and weight training, all these great things, and you're doing 10,000 steps, don't change a thing. You're doing fantastic. If you had a specific reason, like blood sugar issues or cardiovascular issues, okay, then maybe I'd, I'd uh, recommend 30 minutes of cardio, uh, like steady, more steady state twice a week. But I wouldn't change a thing. You're doing phenomenal. Keep it up. Haley's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. For years, I've noticed a lot of tension in the right side of my neck. When I lay down at night, I noticed that it seems like I have a second pulse that is not my carotid artery, but it beats loud, and it looks as at my neck in the mirror, I can see it pulsing. I don't notice this, however, when I stand and look in the mirror. Is this something to be concerned about with or feeling normal? Thanks. All right, this is really interesting. So remember, on podcasts, in general, I can't provide you with medical advice, medical treatment plans, or any diagnosis. So I don't claim to do any of those things. Just want to throw that out there. Just someone that's been in this for over 20 years uh, and has worked with over a quarter million people and and, uh, has seen a thing or two. So what I want to share with you is this, is that it's possible it is your carotid artery. So it's possible. I'm not giving you a diagnosis, but it's possible. And what happens is when some people lay down, they and their arms are like kind of pushed against their chest, they're actually forcing and pushing more blood through the heart up to the carotid artery. So that's, that's very possible. So you might ask yourself, when you're lying on your back, uh, and as long as you're not overweight, then there's less tension on the heart, right? Because when you're when you're overweight, you have a lot of weight on you. I have, I have a good friend and colleague who's a world-renowned pulmonologist and tells me that uh, a lot of people with um, COPD or, or they might be overweight have a difficult time uh, lying down to sleep. It's too much pressure on their lungs and on their heart, which I get it when he said that because yeah, they might be they might have 50, you might be like lying down with a weight vest, right? It's difficult, right? So they sleep more seated. But Here's the thing. So, so just ask yourself that, of course, is, is there weight? So um, if, if there isn't when you're lying on your back, okay, it could, might be positional. The other interesting thing is I have a feeling you're lying on your left side. Now, I recommend actually lie, I recommend for most people to sleep on their left side. Um, it's, it's the best for lymphatic drainage, et cetera. So the issue, though, is that when you're lying on your left side, there's typically more of a stimulation of the vagus nerve, and you might actually get a little bit more of that pulsating on that left side. That's actually been seen. That that's not, um, that's not necessarily uncommon. But there are other reasons. Like there could be blood pressure reasons. There could be electrolyte uh, issues. There could be an imbalance between, again, like high and low blood pressure, so sodium potassium uh, with the kidneys. So uh, if it continues, of course, I would recommend uh, for sure speaking with your PCP about this and um, you know just making sure that that if it happens some nights and doesn't happen others, that you look at all the variables as to why it happens and why it doesn't. All right. So hopefully that was helpful, uh, Haley. Marika is up next and last. That is our sixth question for today. Six yesterday, six today. Marika says, hi, I have a very hard treatable candida biofilm, probably multi-species. I also have strep and SIBO, visible in mouth and probably throughout my whole body. Since I feel like both rashes and chest pain when consuming the slightest of even complex carbs like wild rice and sweet potato. I spent $20,000 on diets and protocols, tried similar to the CBO protocol, including biofilm breakers and with practitioners. It doesn't resolve. If I eat too little carbs, my body in candida gets in defense mode, and if I put in just a little, all symptoms are back. What level of carbs should I eat, and what else should I do? Also, have insulin resistance and... uh, Helibacter, et cetera, which is H. pylori, plus toxicity. Trying to get it all out on continuous protocols, best Marika. Okay, so this is going to sound like I am, um, you know, on the bandwagon for equal life. But here's the thing. What we do works. There isn't anything similar to the CBO protocol. There's nothing similar to it unless you copy it. It's done in a very specific way. We use citricidal drops for the hardest uh, specific cases, and it comes with a specific nutrition plan that helps with all of these things. But here's the thing. We don't even ask anybody, oh, you know, you need to believe us. No, we, we guarantee it, like literally guarantee it. 
So that that's the big difference. Like we know what we do works only because we've done this now for 20 years full time. We've worked with over a quarter of a million people. That's a lot of data to be able to say, oh, this isn't working. Let's do this. This isn't working. Let's do this. Oh, this is working. Let's do more of this. Let's do this. this. And eventually you perfect it. You really do. And if you're working with a health coach, then they can also guide you through this. So my, again, I know you've already spent a lot of money. I was in the same place, literally the same place. I saw two dozen different specialists for years. And then finally I met um, some integrative health practitioners, but I still saw them for seven years until I met my mentor and spent a hundred thousand dollars. If you look at it for, uh, like education and all practitioners, all those things, it was crazy. Like, I mean, that's, that's with education, but, um, but I was in your same boat. Maybe it was like 20, $30,000 on practitioners and supplements as well. So I get it. I totally understand. Okay. So let's look at it a different way. You've got three options. One is you can just go into the CBO protocol with the citricidal drops. Um, and you can follow the, the, the guide that comes along with it. But if you have insulin resistance and you have H pylori, it's also a reason why insulin resistance is going to keep the blood sugar high, which is going to affect the carbohydrates. So you can't just do that. And that's why this might not be working. You need to look at this from a holistic perspective. You need to fix what's going on potentially with your thyroid, you need to fix vitamin D levels. You need to fix the insulin resistance. If you have PCOS issues, you have to fix that as well. You need to work on the H. pylori, which is different too. So, I mean, you need a comprehensive program. You don't need to work with us over at Equal Life, but I would work with a level two integrative health practitioner. You can find level the level two integrative health practitioners all over the world at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. Just click on the practitioners tab or work with us over at equa.life forward slash health coaching. Uh, it's forward slash health dash coaching, and you'll be able to go from it from there. But you know, you, this is not a carb issue. Right now, you can't eat carbs because you have insulin issues, you've got gut issues, you've got a lot of things going on in the body. So does this mean you're just going to stay away from carbs the rest of your life? That's not the answer. It's just not. So what we need to do is work on everything at once, not one thing at a time. That's truly the way that you get well because everything is synergistic. Everything affects everything else. So hopefully this is helpful, Marika, we hope, or working with an IHP, um, that this is the last stop on your train and uh, that in 12 to 16 weeks, you're going to be feeling remarkably better. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you. Thank you for the reviews of the podcast. Thank you for the shares. Uh, really means a lot to me. Don't forget, tomorrow starts a new week on the Cabral Concept Podcast, and I am back with our Motivation and Mindset Monday. Stay tuned.